Imagine standing on the edge of a colossal crack in the Earth's surface, a rift so vast that it's literally tearing a continent apart. Beneath your feet, tectonic forces are at work, stretching and splitting the land, creating a geological drama that has been unfolding for millions of years. This is the East African Rift, where the Earth's crust is thinning, where volcanoes rise, and where earthquakes rumble. The East African Rift is rewriting the future of Africa, hinting at a time when the continent could be split in two, and a new ocean might emerge to separate its landmasses. This isn't mere speculation. The evidence is etched into the landscapes of Ethiopia, Kenya, and beyond, where lakes, valleys, and mountains reveal the scale of this epic transformation. What does this mean for the people, ecosystems, and global geography? Today, let's delve into the heart of the East African Rift to unravel the mysteries of this massive crack and its extraordinary potential to reshape the world as we know it. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button and like this video as it's the best way to support this channel. The East African Rift is a tectonic plate boundary zone where the African plate is rifting into two smaller plates, the Somali plate and the Nubian plate. This process, known as continental rifting, occurs as a result of divergent tectonic forces that pull the Earth's crust apart. The rift system extends approximately 6,000 kilometers from northeastern Ethiopia to Mozambique in southeastern Africa, making it one of the longest rift systems in the world. The rift began forming about 25 million years ago due to forces beneath the Earth's surface. Molten rock or magma from the mantle exerts upward pressure, causing the overlying lithosphere to stretch and fracture. These fractures develop into faults that delineate the boundaries of the rift valley. Over time, these faults create a series of parallel valleys and ridges, which are characteristic of rift zones. The East African Rift is divided into two main branches, the Eastern Rift and the Western Rift. The Eastern Rift runs through Ethiopia, Kenya, and northern Tanzania. It is distinguished by prominent volcanic features such as Mount Kilimanjaro and Mount Kenya, as well as alkaline lakes like Lake Turkana and Lake Natron. The Western Rift is bordered by some of Africa's largest and deepest lakes, including Lake Tanganyika, Lake Kivu, and Lake Albert. The Western Rift is less volcanically active, but is notable for its significant seismic activity. At the northern end of the rift lies the Afar Triple Junction, a geological intersection where three tectonic plates meet, the African Plate, the Arabian Plate, and the Somali Plate. This junction is a hotspot for tectonic activity and is considered a critical area for studying the dynamics of rifting. The thinning of the crust in this region is so pronounced that new oceanic crust is beginning to form, signaling the early stages of ocean basin development. The East African Rift is a hub of volcanic and seismic activity, driven by the underlying movement of tectonic plates. The rift's volcanism and earthquakes are not just byproducts of its formation, but are also key indicators of the dynamic processes shaping the region. The rift hosts some of the most iconic and active volcanoes in Africa. These include Mount Kilimanjaro in Tanzania, the tallest mountain in Africa and a dormant stratovolcano, and Mount Kenya, a dormant volcano and the second highest peak in Africa. Volcanic eruptions in the region are a testament to the movement of magma beneath the Earth's crust, which contributes to the thinning and splitting of the lithosphere. Seismic activity is another hallmark of the rift. Earthquakes occur as the crust adjusts to the stresses imposed by tectonic forces. While most earthquakes in the region are relatively small, they serve as reminders of the rift's tectonic dynamism. Occasionally, larger seismic events occur, causing damage to infrastructure and posing risks to human settlements. The East African Rift represents the initial stages of a process that could ultimately divide the African continent into two separate landmasses. This rifting is driven by convection currents in the Earth's mantle, which create upwelling forces beneath the crust. Over time, the crust stretches, fractures, and thins, making way for molten rock to emerge. As the crust continues to weaken, large sections will sink, allowing seawater to flood the depression and form a new ocean basin. 
This transition marks the evolutionary path from a continental rift to an oceanic rift, as seen in the Red Sea and Atlantic Ocean's histories. This dramatic transformation will not occur overnight. It is estimated to take tens of millions of years. However, the signs of this future division are already visible. Currently, the rift is widening at rates of a few millimeters to centimeters per year. While imperceptible on a human timescale, this rate is significant over millions of years. As the Somali plate continues to move away from the Nubian plate, the rift will eventually widen to the point where seawater inundates the area. This will lead to the formation of a new ocean basin. The resulting ocean that will separate eastern Africa from the rest of the continent will create a new island landmass. This is similar to how the Atlantic Ocean formed when South America and Africa drifted apart. If you look at the west coast of Africa and the east coast of South America, you'll notice they fit together like two jigsaw pieces, beautifully highlighting how these continents were once joined as one. Now, assuming that millions of years down the line, nation-states will still exist in the form they do now, here is what we expect would happen when Africa finally splits into two. Six landlocked countries, namely Rwanda, Uganda, Burundi, the Democratic Republic of Congo, Malawi, and Zambia, would inadvertently find themselves with a coastline. A new coastline just in their front yard would come with huge advantages. The previously landlocked countries will now have access to the sea, giving rise to the reduction in international logistical expenses and creation of shipping and fishing industries that did not exist. The countries will build harbors that will connect them to the rest of the world directly. The smaller continent created by the rift will include countries such as present-day Somalia and parts of Kenya, Ethiopia, Eritrea, Djibouti, Tanzania, and Mozambique. But according to geologists, the smaller of the emergent continents may drift away from the rest of the continent. Depending on how the rift happens, there is the possibility of new nations forming, old nations merging, or completely breaking apart. Geologists predict that Madagascar will itself break apart into smaller islands. Quite possibly, the new ocean that may arise in another 5 or 10 million years will be named the African Ocean and the world will have a new and eighth continent. The development of this new ocean will connect the Red Sea, the Indian Ocean, and the Atlantic Ocean, fundamentally altering global geography and enhancing Africa's strategic importance. The creation of a new ocean will also bring significant climatic and ecological shifts. Coastal climates will become more humid, altering rainfall patterns and vegetation types, the biodiversity of the region will also undergo dramatic changes, as terrestrial ecosystems give way to marine environments. New coral reefs, fisheries, and saltwater ecosystems will emerge, supporting species adapted to this transformed habitat. However, this evolution may also result in the loss of existing terrestrial ecosystems and species that are unable to adapt to the new environment. Rift lakes such as Lake Tanganyika and Lake Malawi, could become part of the new ocean system, further transforming their ecological dynamics. Doubtlessly, the emergence of new coastlines will unlock a myriad of opportunities for economic growth. There will be far more maritime activities and a possible shorter route to other parts of the world. But there will also be terrifying implications. As tectonic activity intensifies, earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, and land subsidence will become more frequent, leading to widespread destruction of infrastructure such as roads, buildings, and bridges. Meanwhile, Africa is the most impacted region when it comes to displacement, with a larger number of countries affected than any other continent or region. Every year, millions of people are internally displaced in Africa. As the plates continue to split in the future, this phenomenon will result in the displacement of communities and settlements. The transition from a terrestrial to a marine environment in the rift zone will destroy existing ecosystems. Unique terrestrial habitats, including forests, savannas, and freshwater lakes, will be lost or significantly altered. Many plant and animal species that are unable to adapt to the new environment may face extinction, while others will become endangered due to habitat changes, 
resulting in a significant loss of biodiversity. As the rift continues to evolve, it reminds us of the ever-changing nature of our planet. While the ultimate splitting of the African continent may be millions of years away, the East African Rift provides a glimpse into the future of our world and underscores the intricate interplay between geological forces and life on Earth. Who knows whether humans will be around to see any of these changes, but discussing the possibilities of the future is important as it may come earlier than humans think. What are your thoughts on Africa splitting in two? Leave a reply in the comments section below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.